Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video, uh, we're moving into the next chapter where we start talking about the collection libraries and some different types of collections. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about maps, we're going to talk about sets, and we're going to talk about buffers. Uh, now, we've seen collections for a while. We, we discussed our first collections way back in Chapter 7. We talked about arrays and lists. Uh, we saw what they could do. And we also saw that the arrays and lists were both uh, basically subtypes of a type called sequence. Um, in the next chapter and in various places, we've also seen hints that there are other types of collections, other sequences. For example, the range type um, we've seen, and also the, uh, um, the vector type we've seen. Um, and so now we want to get a more complete view of the collections library. And of course, really to do this, you want to go to the Scala API. So if you go to the API and you go down to where it has Scala collection. So there's a general Scala collection package and then there are multiple packages underneath it. We're going to pay attention to the Scala collection immutable package and the Scala Collection Mutable package. Now, there are lots of classes in these packages. So, for example, Scala Collection here. Um, you know, there's some description, and then there's a long list of different traits and classes and objects that occur in here. Um, and we can't really talk about all of them but it's actually helpful to look at just a few key elements and probably the best way to look at them is through um, a UML diagram, in particular a simplified UML class diagram. Now each of these boxes really has a you know, hundred or so methods inside of it. Things like the uh, apply to get things out, the uh, index of map, filter, all of the things that you've been calling on are on array and list actually exist in most of the boxes, most of the types that are on this diagram. Um, so the collection library starts uh, this is as of Scala 2.9. Uh, there's some discussion of, of changing this. Starts at the top with a type called traversable. And traversable is basically the simplest type of thing that says, that all this says is you're able to run through it. And then it contains a bunch of methods that are the things that you should be able to do for anything that you can run through. A subtype of traversable, which is a little bit more um, complete in its functionality, is iterable. Um, and iterable just means that it's able to give you an iterator. It has all of the methods that were in traversable, as well as a few more. And where things get interesting is the fact that there are three different subtypes of iterable. Now, we have primarily been dealing with sequences, uh, but there are also subtypes for sets and for maps. And we'll talk about what each of those does in more detail in the coming videos, and we'll actually look at them as well. Um, at least in the general collections library, our sequence breaks down into um, two subtypes. There's index sequences and there are linear sequences. Linear sequences are sequences that you cannot uh, jump around in randomly and do so efficiently. A list is an example of a linear sequence. When you run through a list, you're really supposed to run through it from the beginning to the end and not do random access. In fact, trying to get the elements out of a list backwards is very inefficient. You're actually better off making a new list that is the reverse of the first one and then running through it. And if you want to access things randomly, you really need something that's an index sequence. An index sequence just says that you have the ability to index into it efficiently. Um, and for our set over here, there's some subtypes of that as well. Um, to give a brief introduction, a set is just like the mathematical concept of a set. It doesn't allow duplicates, but uh, which is so one difference from the sequence. You can't have duplicates in your set. Another difference is the fact that order doesn't matter. In a sequence, 
it's the order of things that really specifies where they are and that's how you look them up and that's how you manipulate everything is by their index. Um, in the case of a set, that is, is not true. And in fact, as we'll see, when you add things to sets, the orders can just be completely randomized because it doesn't matter. There are um, two main subtypes of set that are in the, the general collection uh, package, the bit set and the sorted set. And you can go look at the API and see what the relative strengths of those two are. Now, one of the subtypes under the Scala collection is Scala collection immutable. Um, so you basically have two large sets of, of collection libraries, one of which only handles things that can't be mutated. So for example, this is where list is, and another one that handles things that can be mutated. You notice that this class diagram starts off the same, a traversable, and this is an immutable traversable, this is an immutable iterable, and then there are three main subtypes of that, the uh, immutable set, the immutable sequence, and the immutable map. Um, we'll, the map allows you to look things up using a key and value pair. Once again, we'll see the details of that in, in a later video. Obviously, when you go to immutable, there are a lot more subtypes that are implemented. So we talked about the fact that a list is a linear sequence. There's also types for queue and stack and stream, which are linear sequences. The vector type that we've seen previously, as well as range and numeric range, are both index sequences. And because they're index sequences, you can jump you can jump to random locations in them and do it efficiently, which is what you're not allowed to do with these things over here. Your string ops, uh, strings get converted to string ops so that you can do things with them, and then a page sequencer in here. Your set has a bit set that is immutable and a sorted set that is immutable, but they also have a list set and a hash set as well. Uh, for the maps, there's a whole bunch of different ways that they implement maps. Um, and, and so in some ways you have to know which of these fits the application that you're doing best and then pick the proper one. On the mutable side of things, we have, once again, a somewhat similar inheritance hierarchy. Traversable and iterable, we have our set, our sequence, and our map. But here, there are two other types, a priority queue and a stack that come off of this. The set has the bit set, a hash set, and a linked hash set. Um, the map has a hash map, a list map, a linked hash map, a multi-map, and a weak hash map. Um, yeah, there. once again, you can go to the API and you can look at the details of these. We will, in some subsequent videos, cover some of the, the key points of them. And then you can see that under sequence, there's a whole set of, of things. So we have our linear sequence and our index sequence, and these have different subtypes underneath them. There's also a type called a buffer. And so we'll look at the buffer in the next video and show you how a buffer differs from for example, the uh, array and the list that you're used to. So this video kind of gives you a broad overview of all the different things that exist in the collections library. Um, and really, a big part of the strength of Scala is the fact that it has such remarkably broad and powerful collections libraries. There's just so much that you can do using the native collections without having to write your own code for it. And that really makes it so that you can do a lot more with the language um, much easier. So we'll start looking at playing with these things in our next video and we'll go through some of the highlights of these collection videos. That's it for now.